Okey diyoruz. En son ne oldu? Marten Tempi ile Kvota nasıl böyle iz bakacağını ve nasıl kendi izlerini yok edeceğini anlattı. Gayet ayrıntılı bir şekilde. Sonra da en son böyle saatler geçti. Oradan 10 saat, 11 saat artık whatever. Hadi artık yapmaya başlayın dedi. Sonra bu ikisi yürümeye başladılar ve birkaç dakika sonra iki tane iz buldular. Böyle sonra aşırı rahatladılar çünkü kovat çok dar aldıydı hani ben günler boyunca sadece dal parçalarına bakacağım yerdeki işte kırık var mı işte bir insan tarafından yapılmış bir kırık gibi yoksa normal bir kırık gibi falan ben deliririm böyle bir şey bir ay boyunca yapacağımı bir insan falan aşırı gergin ve canı sıkılmış diyor sonra birden böyle direkt işaret olduğunu bir şey, bildiği bir şey görünce Martin'i çağırıyorlar işte böyle sympathy gibi bir şey yaptı iki dal parçası arasında şuna dokununca buna da dokunmuş gibi oluyor. Marten geldi bunların gösterdiklerini gördü aferin gayet güzel falan şurada da bir tane vardı onu kaçırmışsınız ama onun dışında iyi falan. Kvot dedi ki o zaman hadi yani sence bugün başlayalım mı onlara doğru gitmeye işte bu izi bırakan insanlar yoksa ertesi gün mü başlar, başlarız ne dersin dedi. Marten dedi ki bu izleri ben yaptım da gerçek falan değil. Hani bunlar gerçek ben kendim bir iz koymamış olsaydım sırf siz bulun diye o kadar nadir iz buluyor olacaktınız ki siz direkt iz bakmayı bırakmış olacaktınız. Onun için sizi test etmem lazım. Sizi arada bir yoklamam lazım. Kasıtlı bir şekilde kendi bıraktığım izlerimle beraber. Böyle deyince Kovadaymaş üzüldü falan. Ama sonra olayı bir oyun gibi bir şeye çevirdiler. İşte Tempi ile Kvot'u kaçırdığı izlerden bir silver kazanıyor Marten. Bunları bulduklarından da bunlar böyle yarım peniler kazanmaya başlıyorlar. Böyle böyle bir oyun gibi bir şeye çevirdiler. Oyun gibi olunca Kvot eğlenmeye başladı falan. Gün bitti. Akşamına da Marten bir hikaye anlattı. Bunlar güzel güzel dinlediler falan. Bölüm orada bitti. Çok da bir şey olmadı sanki bölümde. Okey diyoruz. Başlamadan önce diyecek bir şey var mı düşünüp geliyorum. Chapter 80. Tom. The next day Martin left with has been dead on. While Tempe and I remained behind to keep an eye on the camp. With nothing else to occupy my time, I started gathering extra firewood. Then I searched for useful herbs in the undergrowth and brought water from the nearby spring. Then I busied myself by unpacking, sorting, and rearranging everything in my travel sack. Tempi dissembled his sword, meticulously cleaning and oiling all the pieces. He didn't look bored, but then again, he never looked like anything. By midday, I was nearly mad with boredom. I would have read. But I hadn't brought a book. I would have seen pokers into my threadbare cloak, but I didn't have any spare cloth. I would have played my lute, but the trooper's lute is designed to carry music through a no noisy tap room. Out here, the sound of it could carry for miles. I would have chatted with Tempe, but trying to have a conversation with him was like playing catch with a bell. Still, it seemed to be my only option. I walked over to where Tempi sat. He, has, he had finished cleaning his shirt and was making small adjustments to the leather grip. Tempi, Tempi laid aside his shirt and came to his feet. He stood uncomfortably close to me with barely more than eight inches of space between us. Then he hesitated and frowned. It wasn't much of a frown. Barely the tinny of the lips and a slight line between his eyebrows. But on Tempe's blank sheet of a face, it stood out, it stood out like a word written in red ink. He backed away from me by two good paces that eyed the ground between us and stepped forward slightly. Understanding dawned on me, Tempe, how close do Adam stand? Tempi looked at me blankly for a second, that burst out laughing. A shy smile flickered onto his face, making him look very young. It left his mouth quickly but lingered around his eyes. Smart, yes, different in Adam, 
for you close. He said, I'm uncomfortably close, then backed away. For me, I asked, is it different for different people? He nodded, yes. How close were they then? He fidgeted, complicated. I felt a familiar curiosity flicker up inside me. Tempi, I asked, would you teach me these things, teach me your language? Yes, he said, and though his face betrayed none of it, I could hear a great weight of relief in his voice. Yes, please, yes. Chaos. By the end of the afternoon, I had learned a wild, useless scattering of academic words. The grammar was still a mystery, but that is how it always begins. Luckily, languages are like musical instruments. The more you know, the easier it is to pick up new ones. Ademic was my fault. <laughs> <coughs> okay, dears. A major problem was that Tempe's autonomy was not very good, which gave us little common ground. So we drove in the dirt, pointed and waved our hands quite a bit. Several times, when mere gestures were not enough, we ended up performing something close to pantomime or little mummer's plays in order to get our meaning across. It was more entertaining than I had expected. There was one stumbling block that first day. I had learned a dozen words and thought of another that would be useful. <clears throat> I made a fist and pretended to throw a punch at Tempe. Freed, he said. Freed, I repeated. He shook his head. No, freed. Freed, I said carefully. No, he said firmly. Freed is, he bared his teeth and worked his jaw as if he were biting something. Freed. He punched his fist into his palm. Freed, I said. No, I was amazed at the weight of condescension in his voice. Freed. My face got hot. That's what I'm saying. Freed, freed, free. Then he reached out and smacked me in the side of the head with the flat of his hand. It was the same way he had struck dead on last night. The way my father had caught me when I was being troublesome in public. It wasn't hard enough to hurt. It was just startling. No one had done that to me in years. Even more startling was that I hardly saw it. The motion was smooth and lazy and faster than snapping your fingers. It didn't seem to mean anything insulting by it. It was merely getting my attention. He lifted his sandy hair and pointed to his ear. Here, he said firmly, freed. He bared his teeth again, making a biting motion. Freed. Based his fist. Freed. Freed. And I did hear it. Huh? Should have vulgarly freed. Freed. Yes, and I did hear it. It wasn't the sound of the word itself. It was the cadence of the word. Freed, I said. <coughs> he favored me with a small, rare smile. Yes, good. Then I had to go back and relearn all the words making note of the rhythm. I hadn't really heard it before, just mimicked it. Slowly, I discovered each word could have several different meanings depending on cadence of the sound that composed them. I learned the all important phrases, what does that mean, and explained that more slowly. In addition to a couple dozen words, fight, look, serve, hand, dance. The dumb show I had to perform to get him to understand a lot of these left both of us laughing. It was fascinating. The differing cadences of each word meant the language itself had a sort of music to it. I couldn't help but wonder, Tempe, I asked, what are your songs like? He looked at me blankly for a moment and I thought he might not understand the abstract question. Could you sing me an Adam song? What is song? He asked. In the last hour, Tempe had learned twice as many words as I had. I cleared my throat and sang. Little Jenny, no shoes, went 
a walking with the wind, just looking for a bonny boy to love and make her grin. Upon her head a feather cap, upon her lips a whistle. Her lips were wet and honey sweet, her tongue was sharp as thistle. Tempest's eyes went wide as I sang, he practically gaped. You, I prompted, pointing to his chest, can you sing an Adam song? His face flushed a burning red, and a dozen emotions ran wild and undisguised over his face. Astonishment, horror, embarrassment, shock, disgust. He got to his feet, turning away and chattering something in Ademi far too quickly for me to follow. He looked for all the world as if I just asked him to strip naked and dance for me. Chaos. No, he said, managing to collect himself somewhat. His face was composed again, but his fierce skin was still flushed a violent red. No, looking down at the ground, he touched his chest, shaking his head. No song, no damn song. I got to my feet as well, not knowing what I had done wrong. Tempi, I'm sorry. Tempi shook his head. No, nothing sorry. He drew a deep breath and shook his head as he turned and started to walk away. Complicated. Oh, çok sar mı oğlan? O kadar doğal bir şekilde etkilediğini hatırlıyorum ki ben ilk okuduğumda yani bu kısımlarım ve şu an tekrar etkiliyor. Çünkü adım adım Tempi çözme olayı falan. Çok seriyor diyoruz. The Jealous Moon. Bir yanlışım yoksa güzel bölüm. Okey şunu ayarlayayım okey. Kapatmam önce diyecek bir şey var mı düşünüp geliyorum. Nope hadi görüşürüz.